All right. Yeah. Welcome to Podcasting 201. Uh, first, who's already doing a podcast? Okay. So, so, all right. How many of you were in the last session? Wow. So, continuation of session number one. Outside. Um, well, isn't that what 201 means? <laughs> Maybe you did 101 last year. I don't know. Um, well, hey, uh, for those new, I'm Mike Sorg. I do Sorg of Strong Media. I started five years ago with the Wrestling Mayhem show, um, which, and I just kind of made something for everything I like. Uh, I have a music show, a tech show. Uh, I'm helping a friend with this video cast, and there's my blog. Um, and, uh, and basically, we're going to talk about uh, a lot of things we've done to uh, expand those shows, and uh, and I think we've learned over time. It's going to be we have a few points, but it's going to be pretty open ended. So I know a lot of people have a lot of questions to expand on from the last uh, session. Obviously, since there's a lot of you, um, so well, that's me. What do you do, sir? What do I do? You do <laughs> this. I do this. One. Yes. yes. Uh, My name is Doug Nerdum. I'm also known as the Most Reverend Father Student. I have a podcast called Should I Drink That? Which most times you should. Uh, <laughs> it is about craft beer, uh, the craft beer industry. We talk about stuff that's going on in Western Pennsylvania, mostly around Pittsburgh. We try to focus our show on, uh, but we do stretch pretty much all around the world. Any beer news that's going on, we're going to talk about it. Uh, our shows are about once or twice a month, whatever we can get together, because honestly, it's, we're not making any money at this, so it's whenever we have free time. Uh, the podcast started originally with, uh, it was myself and my co-host, this guy right here, that was under Sick Puppy, and uh, this was back in 2006, we saw that there was a need for someone to talk to the everyday person about craft beer. And when we went out and we started searching the internet, there weren't really too many shows geared towards the everyday person, it was more towards the, the craft beer people that were already established. So there was a lot of Bud Coors, Miller fans out there. But they didn't realize that there was a whole new world to explore with craft beer, and that's where we came in. That's for show. There you go. It's an audio show. Uh, we do do some video also. Not so much video as we do audio. Uh, we do have a studio where there's two microphones. Uh, there's the two of us, and we do sometimes bring in guests, which will be brewers. Uh, we go to beer fests. We have a portable kit that we take with us, and. Uh, and we do have some special features such as the drunk dial hotline. <laughs> I don't know if you touched on this with the, the first session. The really cool thing with having a podcast is you can re really do whatever you want. Whatever you feel like doing, just go ahead and do it. So we came up with the drunk dial hotline because we're also guilty of you have a couple beverages and you want to start calling people like your exes <laughs> or your boss to say what you really think. So we tell people, instead of calling them, call us instead. <laughs> but there's a stipulation, because there's always a catch to everything. If you call us and you leave us a message, we're putting it on the show. The first weekend that we did this, we had over 100 calls. <laughs> 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 Which Mr. Sora was guilty of, and the wrestling guys were guilty of calling us. We never well, there. Of course, he did it on Halloween weekend. Yeah. So, you know, there's plenty of parties. For there's a lot of drunk people on the South Side calling us saying, hey! I had to tell you what I thought about my ex today. Everybody at the party I was at called you guys. Yeah. So and, and then it kind of ballooned so, across. Yeah. Not to mention several times at various states of being drunk. No way. <laughs> and we're also big fans of send us your photos, send us your stories. We'll put them on the show. Uh, we get a lot of fan reaction from people saying, "Hey, that was my call that you put on there last time. Thanks a lot." Yeah. Jerk. Yeah. But there is a uh, the drunk dial hotline is set up through Google Voice. It's a free service. Uh, the cool thing with that is you can set it to do not disturb and it automatically kicks it over to voicemail. Once that recording is done, it will then post as an MP3 to your account. So you and you also it. get a very hilarious transcription. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is never I, Sometimes we've actually, because uh, we have one for the Wrestling Mayhem show too, and we've gotten like, uh, people at shows saying, hey, I'm you know, Jim Cornette, they used to be WWE, you're not here, F you. Um, you know, and, and stuff like that, liners for the show, random. Uh, hey, I'm at so-and-so show, and, you know, it, it's, it, it's been pretty fun, and another way for people to participate. And who uh, did you say offer that, offers that service? Google Voice. Voice. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, they, basically they're, they're pushing for, I think, I think they have, like, international calling you can pay for. Um, <coughs> is, is that right, or? It's on the phone. It's in your energy first. Actually, I don't know. I 
don't know how they're making money advertising, I guess, is, is the idea. But yeah, there it is there. Um, but yeah, the voicemail is the feature you're looking at if you're trying to get people interactive in your show. Um, you can also text to this phone number too. Oh, and they have a, a handy feature where you, like, what, what's your number? Do you have like a word in there or something? Well, it's 412-223-SIDT, which is the initials for the show. So you can go pick an area code, put in whatever word you want to try to get, and they'll try to chuck through the numbers and uh, see if they get something to match. Ours is uh, 412-206-WMS0 for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, I think for Awesome Cast, is, I haven't memorized that one yet, so it's something 412 a cast um, you, you can have fun with it, it depends on what's available. Because I think, I think Google only has like a certain bank of numbers as far as that goes. So the so same thing you do it to an MP3 and then where does it get stored? Uh, with them, you go in there, it, it, it has a, it has, looks like, kind of like your Gmail, or email. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has like text messages and transcriptions and everything. And I'll have an option to download it as an MP3. Okay. And you can also have that email to you. So I, I'm okay. sitting there, I get an email every time I get a voicemail. So. And there's an app also for most of your smartphones too. Not for my iPhone. There's a web app. <laughs> <laughs> an app came out uh, yesterday, I think. So. Officially? Yeah, it's sort of. Sort of. <laughs> not by Google, but not by Google. Google. That's a whole other <laughs> session. We're not going to get into the app stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and, and that's one of the first things we want to get on is basically you have your podcast, you know, quality aside, you want to get that community involved. Uh, and this is one of the ways we do it. Um, another thing we know, we've done this for a long time, of course, for us that we're a video podcast now. Uh, we'll cover more into that on the video podcasting 201 tomorrow. Uh, but we have a live chat. You know, even just we put up the webcam. There's us in the studio. We have the chat, even though we're doing an audio podcast, where people get involved, and that is a real big thing. I think uh, you know, Stephen does tech buzz here. He's a he, he, he. It's a lot of involvement. I get a lot of involvement, and those people keep want to come back because they feel part of that community. Um, and that's a it, it's real big to just retain listeners um, to get get people involved. <laughs> You're not going to find a live show from us. Our shows usually last about five hours. We have to consolidate right. down into one. It depends on the type of show you do. Yeah. That's true. Because it's you're sitting there, you're drinking beer with your friends. And this is high octane beer. This isn't four like percent. This is fifteen percent beer. Wow. So over the course of the night, you're going to start feeling it. So that's why our shows are about four or five hours long. We also BS a lot. We want you to have that feeling like you're sitting down with your buddies at the bar and you're just you're having a good time. It's happy hour time, mm -hmm. and that's how we want you to experience it. Meanwhile, it does take us many, many hours to go through an entire show. Um, kind of alternatives to that, if you are doing kind of more edited show, I know I've seen shows, uh, Stream.net does a lot of live interactive content. And I started watching a show called The Game Show. They, I think it was, I don't know if they're still doing this, but I haven't seen them for a while. Uh, but they would have a show every Friday night, invite their users and everything. Uh, you know it's going to be every night at 8 o'clock or whatever. They would probably have hour to two hour of a show that down to half an hour so it's digestible for you and your iTunes. So, uh, without all the I'm getting drunk crap. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just the, the, the going on. That's just an added bonus to having a crap. <coughs> I, know, I know. That's something. If it happens, it happens. I can't control that. That's something you can use for bonus content for if you have an iPhone app, like some of us do. Uh, <laughs> which is another thing you can get people more involved. Um, I, there's a lot of providers out there. Uh, myself and uh, Hutch with Bird's Eye View, we use uh, 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 Wizard Lipson, uh, has a great app uh, where people can get it on their iPhone. Um, where, uh, and and people, people really pick up on it, I've noticed. Like, I've seen the numbers. There's, there's, there's 30 people a month getting that app. You know, so there's 30 new people getting involved in getting that app. And, and we provide a little bit of the content. Like, for us, we're very conversational, very laid back, very. You know, we go off about things with each other, you know, maybe not wrestling. And that's the stuff we put aside for those fans that pick up on it. It's kind of like a member exclusive kind of setup. Uh, and unfortunately, the non iPhone users are kind of get, you know, like, man, I really wish I could see that stuff. So we're trying to figure out other alternatives <laughs> uh, for, for that content for those people. So maybe someday we'll get to that. Um, but, but, you know, it's something that, that people can have right there, have your drunk dial hotline on it. Have your Twitter on it. Uh, uh, lately, I think with a recent upgrade, if we, uh, I've dropped like just my show notes with all the links I do for the blog, and it just creates a list of links of everything you, you know, all stories and stuff you might link, link to on there. 
Um, what else does it do? You can add wallpapers. You can want to add. I, I think I think Bird's Eye View they do a, a blog on there uh, by by one of the members. Um, so it, it's just, just more ways that people get people involved. Um, Facebook. Go go where people. Like we talked about this briefly in 101. Go where people are. Everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's on Twitter. Talk to them about your topic. Mayhem Show, we talk about wrestling. We put commentary up about that, news stories, tell people to connect to the users uh, that are on the show. Because Monday night, we're having a conversation, you know, and people get involved with that. And we and that conversation usually transfers over to content and people get involved on the show the next night. Um, you know, and we're, we're trying to turn around for like the tech show and everything. Um, and on Facebook, same thing, but it is more, it, it is more, there's more chance for a conversation. Because Twitter, you get in the back and forth. Facebook, of course, I, I, I like to put, I'm guilty of putting my tweets to Facebook, because I like that my Twitter friends can uh, get with, can get involved there, and then the people that don't really understand Twitter but get Facebook, uh, we can have a nice threaded conversation, which can go, like, you know, for 20 hits and nobody gets pissed off because they're strange getting split. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which we're guilty of when we, especially on Monday nights. Do, do you use something like TweetDeck for that, or do you? Uh, for for the Twitter, Twitter management? Well, you were saying you, you put your tweets on Facebook as well. Uh, my personal... Uh, or do you just propeller head the whole thing and, and my, come up both? Well, for my... For, no, no, I have it automatically. I, I, for, I It's so long ago, I forget what I do for my personal page. Uh, I think it might be built on Facebook or something, or something at this point. But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's an app on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, like there's like a general Twitter app for that. Mm -hmm. For the fan pages, there is... Lately I'm using Smart Tweet. I went through a few before I found one that worked, honestly. And you can actually set that filter to say, okay, you're adding this person, so you're responding to somebody that's not on Facebook. You can just filter those out, and there's, there's a few settings for that. I, once in a while, I've been popping, I've, I've been using it for just a couple weeks now. Uh, and, and once in a while, you'll see how it filters out like certain things and certain links and everything. And it's good, because then some of that general conversation doesn't flood your Facebook screen. You know? We swear by TweetDeck. That's all the tweet deck. For managing, I have on a PC that's it's fantastic for being able if to. If you see me in another session things. looking over my shoulder, I'm managing mine. I'm I'm plugging stuff on my two podcast tweets. I'm you know putting important important information out to the PodCamp Twitter. Um, seeing what's coming in on the search for PodCamp Pittsburgh and PC, PGH. Uh, it, it's it's fantastic for managing all that. As long as you get, you understand. So I, I had trouble understanding tweet deck at first. Was my problem. It can be overwhelming. Yeah, the way it's set There's a lot to it. Anybody else using TweetDeck? Yeah. I mean, you get the, the, the calm architecture and how everything's set, laid out. It, it's a little intimidating, but once you get the hang of it and can and can zoom through it, it's it's fantastic. You, you'll you'll get so much more accomplished and man and managed through that. You just have to watch how many columns that you have. For those of you that don't use TweetDeck, the way it's set up is each column has a different feed in it. So if you're following, say, hashtag SIDT or your Wrestling Mayhem show, that whole column is dedicated to anybody that's talking about your show or about that particular tag. Mm -hmm. For myself, I follow SIDT, uh, some of the, the local podcasts, also craft beer, and other topics that would have to do with my show. So when you open my tweet deck, I've got about 12 columns going across mm -hmm. of all this information, and I'm sitting there scrolling through it. Now, don't follow it all day because you'll drive yourself nuts and you're oh, yeah. sitting there watching all the you, data. You, you can get information overload real quick with that. That's all right. And you can also set it up for which friends of yours you want to follow, too. I have a column set up strictly for brewers. So if there's a brewery that's going to say, hey, we got this new beer coming out, I'm going to follow them in this column. But I keep it at the very end. Yeah. So it's all about learning how to manage and all they, the data. They just added trends to it, too, which is great. <laughs> Something else I need to manage. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, I don't know how to apply it. Can I just add, um, I'm actually doing a session tomorrow on Hootsuite, so, which is similar That's to another good one too. So if you want to learn more about that. Yeah, I, I've, heard, I've, heard really, I've heard really good things yeah. about it. I've, I've, actually, this one the on the difference is that the one's desktop based and the other's browser based. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's other things like uh, Seasonic. Yeah, I, well, on my BlackBerry, I use Uber Twitter. It's the easiest one for me to manage on a BlackBerry with those strings this big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time's your session, sir? I said 11 in the hub tomorrow. Everybody come. Everybody come. Um, let's see, anything else community-wise? Well, we really stress using Facebook. Uh, for the first couple of years, we didn't want anything to do with Facebook, which is ironic because my day job is social media coordinator. 
<laughs> but now we're starting to use it for our podcast. I figured, well, let's give it a shot to see if, if our fans are going to start using it because our fans are really spread out. Where some of technology beyond, you know, I can get my podcast, I can check my email, and that's it. Whereas other ones are completely involved with Facebook, with Twitter, with force from every social media app that's out there. So we said, the heck with it, let's just start this and see what happens. We had, see, in the past month, we had like 200 and some fans, and then that grew to about, I think we're over 400 and some now, just because we said we're going to start doing this. And now every day we're communicating with our fans. We post questions and say, you know, what do you guys want to drink today? What are you doing tonight? Uh, hey, did you see this on the news? Anything like that where you could communicate and make that connection with your fans is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's, besides time, it doesn't cost you anything either. No, nobody cares about message boards anymore. We've had a discussion board on Facebook for a couple of years. Nobody cares. But, but, but when you get them on that fan page and you're pushing updates to them, then it's in their face. And if it gets too annoying, they're not as interested in you. You know, maybe they're like, oh, I get wrestling stuff every couple of hours, you know, and that's annoying to me, you know. Just, you know but, but the fans that want to know that stuff will be right there on it and know when you're putting a show up. When you're doing an impromptu show, if something changes, you got to guess this week. If you want to post pictures to it, yeah, anybody can do it. Post wherever they want to. Or, yeah. or if you're doing a, a random recording, you know, because, yeah, you can see we're gonna be, you're going to be at this location if you're doing a live recording somewhere. Yeah. That's hey, a good way to post that information. Hey, we're recording the show tonight. We're going to be doing call-ins. Uh, check out about this time. Or call, try calling about this time. Or if we're streaming somewhere, we're going to be over here. You know, which is really nice if you're testing stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what I had a call out recently to test a new Skype. Uh, 10 way calling thing that didn't really work out too well. Uh, and, and, and that helped. We got like six people in there and it went nuts. Um, <laughs> oh, it's just uh, Facebook programs. So do, the, do the Google Voice transcriptions make any more sense when you're drinking? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> when the, well, usually when the call is black, yeah, they make sense. But besides that, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty well. We've read, we've read one there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm on a new computer. Make up a new name for it. Z. I don't know I'm going to get that email in like an hour and go, what the hell is that? Right. So one of the really cool things you can do with, uh, with the fan pages too is you can customize these tabs. If you have uh, any kind of web background, it's going to be really easy to do. It's a thing called uh, Facebook Markup Language. All it is is straight up HTML. You add the application, and then this whole section here, you could actually copy and paste what you have on your website over to here. Uh, let's go to episodes. Okay, how do you get those tabs? I'm sorry. There's that. You can install an application called FBML, which is the Facebook Markup Language. If you know HTML, it's this is like building your own web page. Mm -hmm. You can't put in all the style sheets and everything else. I would some, recommend against it because then Facebook's going to say, ah, no, we don't want that. There are some really good examples. They had a social media map, mashup a couple of weeks ago uh, down to half a lab. And uh, Ian, I can't remember his name, uh, uh, he, he was showing some really good stuff. I think Red Cross has, like, they've done their page up, so you come to it. And aside from the Facebook across the top, it looks like a web page. And, and it has a lot of stuff. Again, the, the idea of go where the people are. You know, there, everybody, there are people. Like, remember back in the day when everybody thought AOL was the internet? Mm -hmm. That's Facebook. People think Facebook is the internet. And that's where they live, and you need to put your content where they live. Because they're not going to find you on iTunes. They're not going to care. You know? And so we, you know. This is slowly taking the place of all other websites yeah. that are out there. So make sure you do have a strong presence, because also, once your fans you'll, like it. And you'll get more spam, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hey, look at you know, that's a, that's yeah. $500. These, these are all tweets that we just push through, and, and then there's the show. So, you know, Wednesday afternoon when our show goes up, it gets pushed through uh, right to it. How long have you been making your shows now? Are they still an hour? Or are they? Um, my shows are about an hour. You're an hour? Um, well, we try to make it an hour. Cut down. We've been up to two and a half hours. We're down to about, on average, an hour and a half, hour 40. So, because. It's just way too much. <laughs> How much time do you spend planning and editing and re you know, recording? What's the total time to get an hour show? Our recording time is usually four to five hours. 
and that's just because we BS a lot and a lot of stuff's not going to make it into a show. But we just we hit record, we just let it keep going. All right, that's just how we do it, though. Everybody else might have a different yeah. system. Twelve for hours to sober up, and then you have to edit. <laughs> yeah. Sober? Come on. <laughs> we just edit. This, this is where, uh, oh, right. uh, back to the FBML. Uh, I don't know if I have it installed in here. Yeah, actually, just even going down here, is this, is this the stack? Yeah. What you use? I'm just getting into yeah, that's it. that part of, of the uh, Facebook design myself. Um, so you go in here, you add it to your page, and there will be a new tab. Uh, they'll, they'll have a box in here. If I recall, yeah. uh, for FBML, and it'll give you, some, it'll give you, and it's basically HTML. You said, yeah, it's straight up HTML to basic tags, and then with the plus R with the arrows, you'll be able to see where what other boxes are still down here, so you yeah. can move them up to the top line. You'll get to the point where uh, you'll drop down here, and there'll be an FBML. Yeah. Uh, it'll say your page name on it. Yeah. Do they show source codes on some of the other pages or not? I mean, your browser will show you the yeah, source code. I mean, I mean, when you're editing, it, when you're editing one of the pages in here, you will see the source code for it, and so you don't see like the visual part of it, which is the unfortunate thing because then you have to hit save and you have to go back, mm -hmm. look at it, and it doesn't look right, then you got to look back again. So there's no offline preview. No. Um, well, you have another browser, but yeah, we're gonna get a little geeky with the HTML. Let's <laughs> uh, say well, we'll, 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 again, you have more experience than I do. Uh, with it, uh, it, say if you already have your website and you have some design elements, like uh, you know you want to bring in some of the some of the look of uh, SIDT, uh, can you bring a lot of that HTML straight over? Most of it I can. Yeah, it. You have to watch the width and everything mm -hmm. else. So I forget they changed this recently. Mm -hmm. With it, you can get more. But I mean, if you have basic web knowledge, you can do a lot with Facebook to promote your show. Uh, you can yeah, also start. Pardon? Yeah, that's good. And, uh, at least, well, there's. Facebook JavaScript, I don't even mess with it. It's too much of a pain for what we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, uh, back to the planning. Uh, wait, oh, yeah. Well, I just wanted to mention in the last session, a bunch of us were really interested in being able to record Skype and turn it into a podcast. Yes, that's Can actually what I I just wanted to make sure we got that in. Oh. Yeah, uh, Skype, if you yeah. are doing a show where not everybody's in the same room, it is glorious. Again, like you're you're running into a situation where uh, you, you guys have moved kind of across cities, so it's hard to get together. And with yeah, there's now about 45 miles between everything. the two of us, and also I have a kid on the way, so I'm trying to do more for my house, whereas my co-host is trying to stay at his house. Mm -hmm. So Skype is pretty much going to be the answer for us to do a joint show. Yeah, uh, for us, same problem. Guy moved to Irwin, another guy lives down in Washington. Then, but the idea was, hey, we got this guy that's been listening to the show for a while. It's in the Bronx that we've been talking to. We got a kid in Texas that we've been talking to. And it gives you that chance to bring people in regards to geography. Um, think conference calling, basically. Um, the big deal for, for recording it, there's software. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's settings in it. You can use that Audacity or, uh, or Audition uh, where you can record what's coming onto your computer. Uh, and some people will record it on both ends and then overlay it on top of each other so they have both ends good audio instead of what comes over Skype. Uh, for us, we uh, had, we initially had it on separate computers, one feed, uh, and we push it through a board on individual channels uh, from each computer. And then you can control each one. Now, today, you don't need quite that much if you don't mind losing a little bit of control because they have this wonderful new beta for the PC users that we've been uh, experimenting more, more on the wrestling show. It's only for PC, which is why we don't use it on the technology show, because everybody's a, a Mac head on there. Um, basically this, we have on average, uh, you know, if you're not doing a video podcast, it doesn't matter what it looks like, of course. Uh, but you, I mean, you can have like, four or five people, audio or video, on there now. Um, you don't need the beta to do it audio-wise. Um, but and now they're even get to the point where, uh, for the video, they're pushing 10 people, which I think that's going to be for a fee eventually. Because when I signed up for it, it, it signed me up for a 28-day trial for the video, uh, multiple conferencing. So, um, but I don't know how much, I haven't experimented much with how many audio feeds you can get it independently. But so then, how do you get a file? Do you get the file from the Skype interface, or do you get the audio? File from audio wise, you need to get that from another program. Basically, okay. say you're working on one computer, 
you have Skype open, and then you bring up Audacity, say. Okay. Um, and uh, basically, uh, you have to set, set the device for internal. Um, it's going to depend on the program you pick. Uh, but again, there's going to be plenty of tutorials and documentation for that. So you normally use Audacity to record Skype? Because I didn't think there was a way to capture an audio. For me, audio. since I go on computer to board and back out, yes. I can do it. Okay. Um, but again, I haven't experimented much with that. Okay, because I know there's a, there's a piece of software out there that's a free Skype recorder. So if you just Google Skype yes. recorder, there's that. Actually, yeah, there is one that we were playing with when, when, we, were having, when we were trying to expand out how many people we had. You know, having recording problems. Uh, it's called Vod Burner. Yeah. There's yeah. also Audio Hijack Pro. Yes. There are plenty of Skype Pro. Plenty of Skype Rippers out there. Now that'll that'll bring that over for you pretty easily. Just do a Google, Google search for it. Uh, um, Vod Burner. It's like VOD Burner. Okay. And that one was really nice uh, if you are doing video uh, because it would bring down your Skype feed video. Uh, their Skype feed, and then they actually have editing tools to bring them together. Um, it's a cheaper program, I want to say like 20 bucks. I think actually. Yeah, it was relatively expensive. So, Vodber is cross platform or it's browser based? Uh, I was experimenting with it on the PC, not browser based. It's its independent program. Okay. It, uh, I think you, it, it interfaces with Skype. Like you. You open up it, you open up Skype, you have to like get a permission to access the call. That's it right there. So I was using it on a pretty low end machine, and that's a pretty decent results. But uh, but again, there's if you're not doing video, there are plenty of these out there for just just taking Skype calls. Hey, I have a question. This might be my view, but like now we have chat, you can do conference um, based up to five, five, six people. Is that recordable? Yes, uh, I have to think to, to, well, you have to bring, I have to, have to play with the audio devices, I think, at that point. You know what I think about? Well, if you're talking on chat, you can actually record it right into GarageBand. GarageBand will create a session for each person. They're, it's yeah. in the they, 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 they got a nice handshake worked out because oh, it's all loud. Okay. Yeah. But again, everybody's got to be on that. That's my problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I ran into those problems with Audacity before. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get Audacity to record different conversations I was having, and it kept crashing on the earth. Mm -hmm. And that was on 64-bit uh, Vista. But we were both using the same thing. So it's, unfortunately, we couldn't test different Windows platforms to see what would work best because we're both using the same thing. But yeah, it's Audacity, it's great just to make that initial recording with an input going to it, and that's about it. And then it crashes. And that input being something external going into the laptop, not you have another recording going and then you restart, or you hit record on Audacity. And uh, Audacity is good for really simple. Yeah, and that's what we record all the shows like I, yeah, I, use it, I use it for a backup to throw it on our computer and something else capturing the audio. Um, but if you're looking to do something that's more extensive, you should, you should look into that you know, like, like we talked about before, uh, with, uh, in 101 we talked about how you can start with a PC mic and kind of upgrade as you go, uh, as you see fit. That's one of those things that would be a consideration. Yeah. Now, when you're using um, your board and going back on the computer, so are you doing like multiple inputs and then just right back into a stereo mix down, or are you still trying to get everybody on separate channels for for recording? Later? Yeah. No, I I don't have anything that uh, uh, broken down. Okay. Uh, it's it's uh, it's all the channels go into the board, and I have one output going into my MacBook Pro. Okay. So we use separate channels on ours. Okay. Do you guys have any examples of people who successfully monetize their podcast sites and how they've done it? Yeah, Leo uh, Laporte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't uh, just monetized; he took it to the only one. Now, this is my <laughs> prime example for video podcasting 201 next uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, actually, here we'll just pull up whatever the hell they have playing. Um, is that my guy? Right now. Uh, there, there you go. Um, that's cool, though. You don't hear. Um, yeah, he basically built a studio. Well, he started out in his attic, uh, and just over Skype, you know. Um, he's been pretty, much, been pretty much a pretty good model for this kind of stuff. Um, and eventually, I guess he had some kind of uh, cottage something in the back that he owned, and he just turned it into a studio. And he have like offices and stuff, and he has like employees. No, you don't have to get this fancy. No, no, no. It's a it's a good thing to look at if you're like, uh, okay, 
okay, well, maybe I could do a schedule source. This is, this is where it could go for you. I mean, most of our studios uh, are set up with this. I don't know. Oh, he's doing his radio show, so he doesn't. Actually, he is live right now. So, he, so how, how's he making money? Did he, is he selling ads, please? Yes. Well, okay. what, what, what's going on right now is he's actually live right now on the radio. He, he has a setup so he can do a radio show across the country syndicated okay. right there. Um, so he, he's a radio guy. He knows how to do that on the spot. Yeah. Hey, you should check out carbonite.com. Yeah. He integrates that right into his podcast okay. because he's a pro like that. Yeah. And, and their big thing is he's a guy, of course, most people know him from tech TV um, and, and his radio show. So he's already got the personality. Mm -hmm. So he's got kind of an advantage on all of us here. Um, but the big thing is something that you believe in, like your tech show, he uses Carbonite, or Liz Planning Suit. He uses, uh, what else does he advertise? Audible.com, they talk about all the damn time. Uh, and uh, it, it, so, so, so he's kind of got that trust factor. And as far as him, I, mean, I believe he goes through podtrack.com. That's pod, T R A C.com, I believe. What's um, the name? Pod T. What's that? His name. What was it? L E O L A P O R T. Yeah, Leo. His site is. His, his site is uh, twit.tv. Um, just this week in tech, twit. Um, but the big thing for him is he's got the mass numbers that he's able to go to contract and they find advertisers for him. He turns a lot of them down, apparently. Uh, you know, that's something that fits into a show. You know, I'm a wrestling show, I'm not going to sell. You can, you can sell beer ads. I can well, sell beer ads. Yeah, we're, 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 we're trying to get a great kangaroo. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not going to sell cars at the wrestling show. You know, what is that? The Wine Library or Gary Vaynerchuk? Now, he's somebody who, who, who had his show because he already has a wine business. Yeah. He was selling wine. He went on as a... He, he didn't do it to monetize the show. He did it as a, a value add to his retail. Now, you know, people, if you're in a business and you're trying to turn this around into, you know, something that brings people to your product, you know, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out how, you know, we, I, I work day job, I, I do videos, safety videos for the steel industry. We're trying to figure out if there's a community out there for us to tap into to make more people aware of us. Um, which is hard because it's a business to business thing. You know, but I mean, it's to the point, you know, maybe we could figure out, well, what if we have safety guys on debating about things in the, in the steel industry? You know, if, if that logistically works, that could be an idea. Um, but don't expect a lot of advertising right up front either. You have to establish a show to start with Ellie's. If you're just starting a podcast, at least 10 episodes. If you can get through 10, that's pretty much the hurdle to, okay, I, I can sustain this show. That's it. I, 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 I don't 10, put my show, if I start a new show, I don't put it out there much until 10 episodes. Because yeah. you have to work out the, the technical glitches that are going with it. Make sure this is what you want to do. Make sure if you have co-hosts, you can work with them. I had a show that went to nine episodes and imploded. <laughs> okay? I did not want to talk about Perez Hilton kind of crap, okay? I was not interested in that. I didn't care how talented she was. I was just not up for it. Um, and, and, and there's longevity in that too. Obviously, that one didn't have it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've done we've done ten episodes of the Awesome Cast. We're up to I think sixteen this week. We just had Justin Panaki on, uh, and it's you know now we're just kind of like, hey guys, we're over here. You know, and, and we we put out Facebook more. We're advertising and, and doing more of the Twitter stuff. and trying to figure out our our strategy as far as that and getting the word out. Um, definitely don't wait for anybody. And once you once your show is established and you can provide stats of maybe how many people are listening or the kind of traffic going to your website, you can start talking to other businesses. Like I could go to uh, Save on Beer, for instance. And I'm sorry, all my examples are beer, but that's what I know. All my examples are wrestling, so <laughs> yeah. Not. So um, I could go to a brewery or a distributor and say, hey, I've got this much traffic coming to my site. I've got this many people subscribed to my show. I've got 6,200 listeners subscribed to Show I Drink That right now. I don't have any sponsors. Oh. All of it's out of our pocket because a lot of these businesses still are thinking, we don't know if we should take this risk to advertise on your show. We try not to play advertisements too because of the fact that then we're associating ourselves with a business that 
we're reviewing. We don't want to have any kind of favoritism in there. That's why we do things like the Great Canyon Brew, which is an alcohol filter that you don't really care about alcohol, or about spirits or anything like that. It doesn't affect our beer industry. But it's something fun to have, and if we can sell something, that's great. Yeah, and even for us, uh, like obviously there's not going to be a lot of wrestling products that, you know, out there, WWE's not going to come calling. Uh, maybe some indie promotions. Uh, we're, we're thinking about trying to uh, approach some of them uh, about some kind of some kind of partnership. Um, TNA. They could use the help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially as much as we talk about them in the latter light. Um, but if you have like, like, like a sewing podcast, for instance, yeah. or, or a vidcast, wherever you want to do it, you know, talk to local businesses that have, you know, uh, classes in it and stuff like that maybe you could get some kind of partnership with them to you know, give a discount if they say, hey, I, I heard on the uh, sword stitching show that I, you know, I can come in and get 10% off because, you know, I buy certain products there. Or and stuff you can kind of spin off. Like, it's a, like on the wrestling show, we started to, like, we, we try to see anybody to see how we're trying audible. And there's, there's, we have a certain humor on our show that I think, so we have a lot of non-wrestling fans listen to our show because they just like the humor. We're pretty brash, and we kind of go over the top and push the limit as far as that goes, a little bit. Um, so we got on Audible, and we put like we recommend the Olivia Munn book, or uh, oh, what then? Like it was something where it was just this guy's stories, and he was talking about it just like dirty stories. Uh, and but and we played a clip of it, and it was hilarious. But that fits our audience, not just as because there's nothing for red, uh, uh, wrestling books on Audible. There's like a horrible Stone Cold Steve Austin book. That Bought by accident. Oh my God! Uh, and you really want to hear Hulk Hogan talk for three and a half hours about what he thinks about his career? Seriously? Uh, no. The, the reading the book was bad enough. Um, but also, with all the pluses, there are negatives to it. Whereas, a lot of people will trust our opinion. Now. They, they say that we're established. You know, they you know we have a beer show. They pretty much trust what we're going to tell them about our reviews of our product. Now we tell them go out and try everything once. We can say this is the worst beer ever. Still go and try to see what your opinion is. Well, we had one company that we bashed because their beer was god awful called Butternuts. Which I hope, they're, I hope they're watching right now. That that in session, you can't I, can, I hate these guys, and there's a reason for it. One thing that happened, and this goes with following Facebook and Twitter and the conversations that are going on about your brand or about your show. We said this is the worst beer ever. I would flush it down a toilet. I would throw it to people in Cleveland or Philadelphia. I don't want to drink this stuff anymore. One of their sales guys tried to be anonymous and sent us a message saying, quit your day job, get off the internet, and kill yourself. Basically. Like, joking, kill yourself. Yeah. So we're like, all so right. To be fair, his co-host often says, kill head, yourself. Like, kill yourself, eat a bullet, you know. Hit headbutt a train. That's, that's like his alley. Um That's his thing. But yeah. um, we found out that this brewery didn't like us because we bashed their beers. But they were honest. We didn't say... You know, like, oh my god, this is, you know, we're not even going to try this again. We did try the beers again, and they were still awful. So when we told people that, and um, after the salesman got a hold of us, or sent us this message, he started posting on message boards about us. We found out, and the guy made the mistake of posting on our message board, so we could see the IP address. <laughs> which went right back to Butternuts. So we contacted him and said, hey, just so you know, from now on, and this was episode, I think, 30-something, we're now at the 66th. We still bash these guys. Like, just so you know, uh, your guy was very unprofessional. Here's the messages that he sent us. And, uh, yeah, ever since then, they've been the butt of our jokes. And all of our fans got behind us and refused to buy their beer. Now. Which is huge because with having over 6,200 listeners, there's 6,200 people that aren't going to touch your product now because you pissed us off. And that's a celebrity, too. Yeah. Like and if, if they would have came back and said, all right, you know, we appreciate it. Sorry, you guys didn't like it. You know, it's just what happens. No, this guy came and started attacking us. So we fought back and said, don't drink butter, that's done, nobody's drinking it. And that's a prime example where it, I mean, you can flip. Um, but you, the, you were talking about uh, how to monetize. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, who's a professional sword swallower, was in wow, a that was a great job. Was in a store <laughs> and saw that Schmaltz Brewery was coming out with the Coney, Coney Island one. Yeah. Uh, blockhead sword swallower, and he a went, and was, wait a minute. He approached Schmaltz, and they sponsor his podcast because he's an established name in the okay. sideshow industry. That's a perfect industry. example. <laughs> they paid for his equipment. They paid for him to be on a national podcasting company, and he's in his third season. I've worked with Schmaltz on a couple things. Those guys are fantastic. But that was just, he saw it. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's, you know, there's a little niche there for you to jump in. 
Uh, kind of back on the monetizing, I, I mentioned this to a couple people in between sessions. Uh, I don't have to get back to it. Uh, this is what I've been experimenting with. This is what I've gotten my Audible deal through. Um, basically, uh, most of the stuff I've found through this is Commission Junction uh, is uh, basically you're generating leads for these people. Uh, I, I talk about Audible, tell them to use our link, audiblepodcast.com slash sort of media. And uh, if they go and get the 14 day trial and they stay on past that for like I think a month, we get you know a certain amount of money. Uh, and they have other options as far as that goes. I actually started searching through here because I wanted to see if there was more stuff, more than just the typical. Everybody's got Audible. Everybody's got Carbonite.com, you know, especially if you're a tech podcast or something. Uh, so I want to make sure, you know, I'm, I'm talking about stuff. Uh, you know, for instance, I use Backblaze for my backups. So I try to see if they had an affiliate deal, one with them. We'll see if anybody, you know, thinks on it. Um, and, but uh, you can look through here. I actually did look up some wrestling stuff. You can actually get leads to like WWE's shop and get a percentage off of the deal. If you have an audience that will listen to everything you say, you know, maybe maybe Spoon here can uh, get with uh, some kind of service like this that represents ear sales and it will, and just like an Amazon uh, affiliate and say, hey, this is a really good beer. We recommend it. If you want to support the show, buy it over here. Uh, but we got through Sorter Tribe Media first, so then you get the kickback. So we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is the easiest to get into, to at least get with it. Basically, the advertising we're doing now is we're exper experimenting with different methods. We tried an affiliate program through HighSpots.com, which is they sell wrestling merchandise, rings, God knows, any wrestling masks, you know, anything. Um, and we couldn't get people to go over these. I think just people that watch our show don't like the store, you know, which I've never honestly bought from it, and that was a mistake, and I'm not going to do that again. Uh, and this is basically what we're experimenting with right now. This is uh, similar to uh, another group that we went through, is uh, a company that sells beer glasses. Mm -hmm. Because it's when it's coming to drink a craft beer, you don't just drink out of a pint glass, there's different shapes, styles of beer glasses. We thought that would be perfect for our viewers and for our listeners, and nobody really went to it. They didn't really care, because they felt that we were pushing stuff onto them, which we just said, hey, check yeah. out this website. Yeah, let's be honest, like, like, if there's stuff that you're into that you think your audience would like, and you legitimately like it, and they have some kind of program, you know, like, I drink a lot of Rockstar. You know how many bands have Rockstar sponsorships? Or Gagermeister or something? I mean, they, and honestly, if you're a liquor cast, and you really take on lip on liquor cast, hit them up. You might get an affiliate. Or not even affiliate, just a, a paid advertisement. Well, there's a good chance your fans will know if you're BSing them. Yeah, exactly. They, they can sell one in the gym. Everything's friends, poor parent, and it'll be obvious. Uh, this is, I believe, what This Week in Tech, twit.tv, uses. Um, uh, basically, I have a problem with it because I'm on a server. As I mentioned before, I'm on a server. I have trouble. I'm, afraid to, I'm basically afraid to change the URL for people to get to my podcast because I'm afraid to lose... Uh, listeners, somebody could talk to me afterwards about how to circumvent that. I would love to have a conversation. Uh, but basically, you set it up so if your stats go through them, they have um, surveys for listeners, and uh, I believe they represent you to advertisers who connect you. Um, yeah, basically, if you, you're not an uh, advertising executive, let somebody else do it because we're all trying to go to these sessions and figure it out. And these guys know what it is. And there's plenty of services like this. I think Blueberry is a sponsor for PodCamp. Uh, I just started looking at their service, to be honest. And I know I know a couple other people do. Uh, they have something similar to this, I think. Uh, does Libsyn have a service like this? I'm not familiar. Wizard. Wizard Media. Wizard. Had, um, I keep forgetting. Uh, Wizard, because the iPhone app, of course. Um, they, they have services like that. Um, there's other there's other. But th this one, I mean, obviously, they're doing pretty much the most successful podcast out there uh, with Leo. Uh, so, you know, they'd be a good one to get into. And uh, the big thing is have a good stat package. Whatever host you have, make sure you're finding out who's listening to you, how often, not the pure downloads, but if they have, like, Blip TV is fantastic because uh, you can do it for video or audio uh, to a point. Um, but they tell me how many individual people have watched my show, uh, how long they've watched it if you're doing something streaming. Uh, you know, if you can find a package like that and be like, look, people are engaged with this. People are watching 75% of my show, so they're going to get to your ad at the 15-minute mark. Uh, you know, it, it's, 
just have the information is key. Show them that you have, you know, half a million downloads or something, you know, and 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 prove it beyond that. Be able to sell that your niche is there and passionate about what you're talking about and willing to listen to you and recommending a product. Why can't I make money? I don't. Know. <laughs> So, what's your take on the new Twitter? The new Twitter? Yeah, I haven't gone it yet, but it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I never go to the actual site, I just use it on my phone. Yeah, I use it through my apps. Through party apps. I think it, it adds a lot of functionality that these apps, these apps have been for a while. Those app developers are in trouble. <laughs> That's what that means. 